In this video, we're just going to take a look at where to find some of the settings referenced in the Axis Cybersecurity Hardening Guide. We're not going to get into all of these in detail. Uh, it would be a very long video if we decided to do that. There are a couple dozen recommendations. Uh, so first and most basic, let's go to Users. There's a couple of things we want to do here. So we want to make sure that we disable anonymous login and PTZ control. This is disabled by default on current cameras. We just want to make sure that that's disabled. Older cameras, that wasn't always the case. Uh, they also recommend creating a backup administrator, an additional user account. So that's also found here. We can just add our account and change it to administrator uh, or operator. They do recommend using operator for VMS uh, servers and clients. So instead of uh, exposing those administrator uh, credentials to the VMS, we're using a separate account. It just locks down that account a little bit more. Uh, note that access doesn't require strong passwords. You'll see it says max 64 characters. We could actually leave this blank. We can make it the default password, which is pass. Um, they recommend eight characters, preferably with a password generator, uh, but don't require it. Moving on under TCP IP, uh, here we want to disable uh, things like ARP, AVHS, basically all of our network uh, settings or protocols that we aren't using. So we can just uncheck these. It's going to close down some ports that were in use before. And actually, if we go to our advanced settings which is under network tcp ip advanced uh, there's a couple more so uh, we can also uh, disable link local so if somebody unplugs camera plugs it into a uh, a laptop it's not going to uh, connect won't give it an address um, if we disable ftp um, It'll also close down an extra port there. So they don't recommend changing uh, HTTP or RTSP ports that can break VMS integration in some cases. Uh, that's one common way that a lot of home and uh, business devices are secured is simply by using non-standard port, not recommended here. Uh, we also have things like SOX, QoS, uh, UPnP, and bonjour that we can disable just need to click through all of these disable uh, hit save so pretty much they all look generally the same as this again that's just simply closing down some ports that aren't in use uh, one recommendation they make which is generally not thought of as a security concern is date and time they say to make sure that date and time is set synced to an NTP server uh, this is simply because uh, some of their recommendations involve logging. We want to have access to intrusion detections, failed login attempts, that sort of thing. Um, and if we don't set the date and time, our logs on the camera uh, will be off, make it harder to investigate, uh, much more difficult if we have an actual incident. And finally, the big one that they actually recommend is sending, uh, forcing HTTPS for uh, login. So uh, we've already created a self-signed certificate. Uh, we'll take a look at certificates in a second. Um, but right now, this is just using a self-signed, which is a little bit insecure. It's just generated by the camera. It's not issued by a certificate authority. And we can force all of our users to use HTTPS only. Now, note that this does not tunnel video to the VMS uh, via HTTPS that's actually based on the VMS configuration. This is only referring to um, password data, data in between the camera and the user, that sort of thing. So it's not video. It's only our operations through this web interface. If we wanted to actually get a certificate from an issuing authority, we'll discuss this more in the post, um, we would go uh, click on our certificate and we will uh, create a certificate signing request. We fill all this out, hit OK. It's going to generate a request that we can send off to any number of certificate authorities. So th authorities like um, Komodo, GlobalSign, GoDaddy uh, does certificates as well. So somewhere between free 
um, and a few dollars for a single certificate, generally speaking, at least for these purposes. Uh, we could also get unlimited plans if we had a ton of cameras where uh, for a few hundred dollars a year, uh, we would be looking at uh, any number of cameras we could generate certificates for. So once we get that, we just hit install certificate, uh, install that on the camera. So there is some extra overhead involved with getting a real signed certificate, um, but that is really the most trusted way to secure this communication. Self-signed certificates are generally not very well respected. They can be spoofed. Uh, that about covers it for where we find a lot of these um, settings. This wasn't meant to be a lot of detail. We've included details and other things in the